Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode here of Minecraft Hardcore Superflat. Thank you for over 1100 likes on the first episode of the series, my friends. I very much do appreciate it. Now, as you can see, my friends, we have got a pretty jacked up inventory, don't we? And we don't really have like a centralized location in which to put everything. And that is why I have put down a crafting table right on over here at exactly zero zero. I figured having a base at zero zero would be literally perfect because if we go on a massive exploration session through the world and we don't want to have any troubles getting back, then yeah, zero zero just seems like a logical place to have things, doesn't it? So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in today's episode. How far we're going to get with this base, on the other hand, I've got absolutely no idea. We've got a very, very, very limited amount of resources right now. So I think what we are going to need to do first of all, is go ahead and plant down some trees and try to maximize the amount of leaves we get as well. So that means leaving a four block gap in between each of the saplings. So that'd be one, that'd be two, and that would typically be the edge of a normal four to six wood block stalk tree. And then we go another one, two, and then that would be where the sapling would go there. And then of course we do the same with the birch as well. So one, two, three, four, and bada bing, bada boom. There we have it. That is the way to maximize the amount of leaves you get out of the typical normal trees you get in Minecraft. Say, for example, that birch tree over there. That would be what I consider a typical tree. So for once, my friends, we are actually kind of limited to the typical build palette that your boy uses in a typical Minecraft house in that he uses oak and wood and stone. I mean, we do have ourselves a wooden pickaxe. We do have ourselves a bunch of stone and deep slate beneath us. There is no reason why we can't go ahead and get the resources necessary to get this thing started. However, what kind of shape are we going to go for? Do we want to have like a typical house or do we want to have like a very geometric sort of shaped house? Say, so for example, a circle or I don't know, an L shape or something like that. I've no idea, man. A CD place. Yes, yes, okay, very, very cool. Well, at least we're getting some advancements in today's episode. That's pretty cool. Uh, also, just to mention, yeah, the horse is still there. It's just sort of uh, inside this pen at the minute. Uh, we will try to incorporate some sort of stable area in our build today. Uh, how exactly we're going to do that is another matter. But, uh, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> All right, so I've decided on a bit of a crisscross-shaped base for our zero. Zero, zero base here and I kind of figured that on each of the little sort of spokes here we could have one area for enchanting one area for let's say a storage room one area for like a living quarters and utility area and then one area potentially for farming with a little stable area I mean these are pretty large areas so we could probably put a mini farm and a stable in the same spoke area right so yeah all right, very, very cool. We have ourselves a bit of a plan, at the very least, which is fantastic. So, what that means is I am now going to begin putting down some chests so we can actually start, you know, organizing the stuffs that we have in our world here. And just like that, my friends, we have a nice, clean inventory again. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, so I think probably the next thing I'm going to do is actually dig down underground and uh, see about getting ourselves some stone. Maybe even come across our first ores of the series. Well, I say come across the first ores. We came across some copper in the last episode, which we didn't mine up. But, yeah, maybe we find our first ores that we are going to mine up, eh? All right, let's do it. Oh, yeah, the Stone Age. Very, very cool. If I believe it or not, we can upgrade to the Stone Age, like, right now. So, why wouldn't I, I guess? So, let's pop this down right on in here. There we are. A little bit of stone. Fantastic. And let's dig down see what we can find here. Huh. Interestingly, we do still get andesite spawning in, so that's kind of cool, right? Uh, I am realizing, of course, that we can't see anything. Well, it's not going to be much, but a little bit of charcoal should be enough for us to make ourselves a rudimentary supply of torches at the very least. I mean, who knows? We might be able to find ourselves an abandoned mine shaft underneath here, for example. That'd be pretty handy dandy, right? Here we are. Time to line up the world like an absolute professional. The good news is I've brought a furnace with me this time, so I can go ahead and smelt up whatever it is I need to smelt up along the way here. So, yeah, it 
should be a good time. All right, let's go ahead and get back to the digging. To be honest with you, my friends, it should be incredibly easy to detect an abandoned mine shaft because, you know, when it's daytime, the only location where mobs would be able to spawn is indeed underground in a mine shaft. Or, of course, if we are lucky enough to have ourselves a stronghold nearby, then that's going to be somewhere else they could spawn. But, uh, yeah, the chances of that happening are pretty remote, aren't they, right? But yeah, the point is, it should be very, very easy if we just listen for a mine shaft or any kind of generated structure nearby. So, yeah. I mean, if we get lucky, amazing. If not, then, ah, well. All right, my friend. So any second now, yep, there we are. Look at that deep slate ores. Also, I'm realizing I can't actually mine these yet. Uh, so that's kind of a pain in the buttsy doodle. We need ourselves some more iron, guys. <laughs> I mean, I guess for now, I could always go ahead and, uh, you know, maybe dig in a different direction. That could probably be an all right idea, right? Oh, and there we have it, my friends. Another building block to add to our repertoire. We have Deep Slate. Okay, very, very cool. Uh, whether or not we're going to find diamonds and various other ores around here is another matter. Ah, oh, man, yet another thing I can't mine yet. <laughs> <sighs> okay, right, we're gonna dig down the left-hand side shaft and maybe find some iron. I wonder if we can find the giant iron veins in super flat. Huh. I mean, if we don't have generated structures generating below Y0, then I'm not going to be holding out much hope for there being giant iron veins. Now, obviously, if they do exist and they're not bugged out in 119, like the generated structures bug is, then uh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. But yeah, like I say, I don't hold out too much hope for it. So yeah, one, two, three, four. That's another torch. And yeah, we'll keep on going. Oh, there goes that pickaxe. And what do we have to show for it? Uh, a grand total of pretty much nothing. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that we've now got cobblestone and cobble deep slate. That's going to be quite nice for our base. But aside from that, it's just kind of been a bit meh. And sadly, I heard no sign of any mobs being nearby. So uh, yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. Oh, good grief. What is going on? There's a freaking zombie siege going on. Please don't break the door. Oh, jeez. Hello. <laughs> There's a lot of guys. Hello, birds. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This is getting a bit, uh, this is getting a bit interesting, isn't it? Yeah, come on then. You want to try it, do you? Oh, gee whiz. They're like pushing each other into the doorways here. Come on. Oh, no. That sounded like the Iron Golem dying. What am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I am going to break my way out of the house here, okay? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break my way out of the house. <laughs> you weren't expecting this, were you, you son of a gun? Oh, jeez. Okay, there's like 7,000 dudes around here. Uh, I don't really want anyone to be blowing anything up around here. Oh, man. Oh, hey, iron from the iron golem. Ah. <laughs> we now have access to an iron pickaxe inadvertently. Well, thank you very much there, iron golem. Your death was most definitely not in vain. So there you have it. Very cool. All right, so let's chuck that there. And then we'll put that in there. And what do you believe? We'll be able to make ourselves... Another iron pickaxe as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Redstone for your boy. Yeah. Give me that beautiful XP. Love to see it, my friends. Love to see it. There we have it. So we've got a little bit of that going on. Uh, we have ourselves some deep slate gold going on down here. So we're going to go ahead and mine these poor suckers up as well. And then if we really wanted to, we could probably make ourselves a golden apple or two once we get ourselves back to base. However, one thing I have just come to realize is if there's a zombie siege going on, then that's probably going to mean I'm going to lose all of my villagers because I didn't save them. I, I, I didn't put blocks in front of their doorways, did I? Oh, man. Um, guys, if there's no generated structures generating below Y0, why am I mining this far down? Like, seriously, what's the point? It stands to reason that what would be a better idea is if we were to be digging at the regular stone layer and then hoping for the best when it comes to trying to get ourselves an abandoned mine shaft, eh? I mean, why would I not do that? 
Hey! <laughs> oh, I was wondering when we might come across one of these bad boys. Eh? Very cool. Our first diamond, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Just one, though, is it? And there we have it, my friends. The very, very bottom of the world. A singular layer of bedrock. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that's that done. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we'll get back up to the stone layer. Maybe do some digging up there. Maybe we'll find ourselves some, uh, some more ores. Excuse me? Okay, so that sound, in my mind, indicates the presence of a cave. But there are no caves. In my super flat testing world, I discovered that there are absolutely no regular caves whatsoever. So, the only thing that I think that noise could indicate is a geode, right? I mean, geodes are still pretty dark on the inside, and therefore mobs are probably spawning there as well. Huh. Okay. So, if we've only got the abandoned mineshafts generating from Y0 upwards, then that, strictly speaking, means we only have about 32 blocks worth of height where they can spawn. So, maybe we go for the middle of that, between 0 and 32, which is 16, and we do a bit of digging around here. Maybe we will find ourselves some stuffs eventually. I mean, I certainly hope so. We definitely need a whole bunch of resources. We really do. Wow. Okay, that's a good start. A little bit of lapis for your boy. Now, if we could just find ourselves some coal, that would be glorious. Oh, there we are. Okay, so we've got ourselves a bunch of iron here. Oh, this is way more like it. We've got a bunch of iron, even more lapis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Level 10 now. All right, Mr. Horsey. I mean, you're going to be rid of your shade here by me taking out the tree here. But it also means you're going to have a slightly bigger amount of room in the pen here. So, uh, you know, kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, kind of a win-lose situation. But uh, there you have it, my friendo. You got yourself a little bit more space. And I have resources now to get myself a small supply of charcoal again. Unbelievable. There's actually still villagers here. And also a slime. Uh, yeah. That's kind of amazing considering we had that zombie siege. The iron golems must have actually done their job. I just realized something, guys. I'm pretty sure we're at the lower end of where coal would typically generate in a Minecraft world. Usually, the higher up you are in a Minecraft world, the more chance there is for coal to spawn, right? But we are way down at Y16. And even the surface level, Y32, strictly speaking, is going to have a lesser than normal amount of coal generating, right? Ah... I think that's something we need to be bearing in mind. Coal supply might wind up being a recurring problem on this series. But uh, I don't know. You could say that that kind of adds to the challenge of it all, right? Maybe that will encourage us to make ourselves a, a proper industrial-sized tree farm. I mean, there are ways and means of doing things in this game. Aside from, you know, doing the norm and just getting coal. So, yeah. All right, guys. So, check it out. We're finally getting all of the iron that we've managed to get so far smelted up. That's 23 bits. So if we minus 7 from, what, 24? 24 is usually the magic number you're looking for for a full set of armor, right? So 17 bits are required for the remaining full set of armor. And then, what, we have 23, so we'll have 6 bits left over for a couple more pickaxes. Look at all that death out there. We got zombos, we've got spiders, we got skelly butts, and hidden among the underbrush is probably some creepers as well. <laughs> but the good news is all of the zombies and skeletons are about to burn to death. Ha ha! Yeah! Getting burnt up there, buddy. You might want to go ahead and put some SPF on there, bud. <laughs> what a dummy. Oh, jeez. Okay, uh, sure. You're docile, though, right? So, we cool. Look at that, though. We're going to be able to pick up all of the skeleton residue, which is good. Look at that. We're getting bones. There we are. All right. So, we need ourselves a chest plate, which is also the first chest plate we've got. And there is all of the armor. Okay. Yeah. Look at me now. Haha. <laughs> Basically indestructible. Good grief. You've seen better days, haven't you? Oh, where's he off to? 
Ah, oh, the poor baby slime. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> Poor little fella. Right, so we've been digging at Y16 in an attempt to try and find ourselves an abandoned mine shaft, right? But we're not finding any coal down here. So maybe we need to go literally at the very, very top of the stone layers here in an attempt to try and find ourselves some coal. Yeah, probably going to be the way to go. Just for now, anyway, because, yeah, I, I really do kind of need the coal. Hey, at least we've got some copper. That's kind of cool, right? I mean, we could have copper blocks used in our base build for whatever reason. Uh, sure. This is kind of nice, actually. At the very least, we'll get XP for smelting it. My goodness, but even more copper. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, this is just brilliant. Um, guys, we are near the surface... And there appears to be redstone up here. How? That's not supposed to generate this high up. Um, okay. I think that these super flat settings I've got going on here have somehow inadvertently messed up the ore generation. Or the ore distribution, more to the point. Well, well, well. Uh, this is a bit of a turn up, isn't it? Okay, so does that mean that diamonds also generate higher up? Because usually diamonds and redstone, they kind of go hand in hand in terms of where they generate. Very weird. <laughs> but also very... Oh, good sweet lord! Uh, yes. I forgot. We are technically in a mountains biome, aren't we? So that is going to be something that happens every now and again. Little bit of uh, silverfish block spawning in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. Oh, jeez. That uh, kind of makes me feel a little bit nervous now. Ah! Oh, oh, another one who decided to despawn immediately. Um, okay. Really? Really, though? Again? Get oh, gee whiz. That was another one. Hello! <laughs> ah! Another one! Go away, man! Making me nervous, dude! <laughs> Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh, kind of one of the downsides of picking a meadows biome as our super flat world. But one of the plus sides is that emerald ore will spawn underground. So, yeah. Again, kind of a win-lose situation. <laughs> There's trade-offs to everything, my friends. Worryingly, my friends, I have still not found a single bit of coal ore. Now, in a regular Minecraft world, you would still find coal ore above Y0, but I'm not finding a single one. Either I've been desperately, like, nigh on criminally unlucky, or there is something else wrong with the Minecraft ore distribution in Minecraft Super Flat Worlds. Anyways, the good news coming out of all of that uh, digging is the fact that we've got ourselves a rather significant amount of cobblestone, deep slate, and various other stones as well. We've got andesite and diorite. I was kind of thinking the diorite could be made into its polished variant, and then we use that as the floor in our base, and then we could use the cobble deep slate as maybe the sort of outside pillars and the cobblestone as sort of the main building resource. Oh no! Looks like another iron golem has gone bye-byes. Oh man! Those poor golems, they've been going ahead and valiantly trying to protect the village and they keep getting absolutely pulverized. Oh man. I'd be surprised if there were any villagers left at this point. Oh, there's one there. Right. Do you know what? Do you know what? I think it might just about be time to do that. We need to save the villagers, my friendos. We really, really do. Wait, these guys are nitwits, aren't they? Do I care about nitwits? Not really, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> Kind of tempted to just kind of let those guys die. I only want the guys who actually have professions. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Talk about living on the edge there, bud! So not only are you sleeping above what was lava, you're also sleeping in a completely open house. What is wrong with you? We have a masochist villager here, guys. <laughs>
So, finally, here we are back at our base location, and, uh, yeah, to be honest, we've actually not done too bad today in terms of resource gathering. Now, I think what we need to do is try to make ourselves a little bit of progress in terms of this build here. Like I say, we're going to use a combination of diorite and the cobblestone and the cobbled deep slate as well. All of those three should go pretty well together. And would you look at that? That's a pretty healthy-looking valuables chest, isn't it? We can make ourselves three golden apples out of all of this. Yeah. So then, let's go ahead and start replacing all of these hay bales with these deep slate tiles. These are going to be the sort of corner pillars. And I was thinking we could go ahead and maybe add a little bit of depth to the build already uh, by adding in... Hang on, if you bear with me just a hot second here. Uh, what do we have here? Deep slate bricks. I was thinking maybe we could add a little bit of depth by adding in some of these little bits here. Then we could put like flower pots on top of them, right? Because at the end of the day, I may be on a new channel here, the Pythonator, compared to, you know, the Python MC channel, but I'm still the flower pot king, all right? So yeah, there we are, my friends, proving what I was saying before about maximizing the amount of leaves you have. So yeah, there's absolutely no gap, and they are literally only just sort of conjoining onto each other, the leaves from the trees, that is. So yeah, very, very good. We should be able to maximize the amount of apples saplings and sticks that we get from the leaves here. Now, while I'm doing this, I do want to quickly address one bit of feedback that I got in the last episode in that uh, some of you guys were saying that this is not a true super flat world. Well, how about this for a plan? If and when we manage to either finish or die in this uh, world here, maybe we go ahead and turn up the ante and we do like a super flat extreme world, which would involve going ahead and cranking up the difficulty to ultra hardcore status so we don't regenerate our health naturally. And also, we just have a typical normal super flat world in that we don't have all of the foliage here. It is literally just a normal super flat world, you know, the same sort that you would usually use to, you know, test things on or build things on for your normal world. So, yeah. Maybe we go ahead and do that in the future. But yeah, for now, this is going to be like dipping my toes into the super flat seed. And also, when you think about it, if you were to go ahead and disable generator structures, you wouldn't get villages. You wouldn't get underground structures either. You wouldn't get mine shafts and strongholds and things like that. So you wouldn't even be able to finish the game, even if you wanted to. If I was able to restrict villages spawning in particular, then yeah, I would probably go ahead and give that a go go but I'm not entirely sure how you do that. I'm not entirely sure how you go ahead and restrict villager spawning, but still have all of the other generated structures spawn. I mean, as long as that bug that I was mentioning in the last episode exists, we're going to have trouble trying to generate the sort of world that we want, you know? The bug, of course, being that you can't have generated structures generate below Y0. So, yeah, again, if they can get that sorted, that would be beautiful. I want to be able to take down the ancient cities for crying out loud. I mean, they're a brand new structure in one point 19 and we can't have them because of a silly bug so yeah come on mo yang please all right so i've got a bit of an idea okay one of the little ends here we were going to go ahead and put like a little micro farm and stable in but also i think we could sort of triple that up and also make it into the entrance right so we dig ourselves out a three block wide entrance here we could walk in here doo -doo 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 -doo. oh look at that we're inside our base but on either side we can have ourselves some cool little things right so for example we could go ahead and have a stable on one of the sides i think that'd be a lovely idea so we go up do a little bit of that carry on with the whole pillar thingy and then we add ourselves in another pillar here potatoes are probably going to be the most useful and probably the most sort of saturating i guess in that you get multiple of them per yield and then you can cook them and then they'll do you for a good amount of time right although with that said maybe we could have ourselves a small amount of carrots in there as well so we can make golden carrots as time progresses that would probably be a good idea as well. Unfortunately, we have a rather limited amount of diorite for our flooring here, but uh, I don't think that's neither here nor there. We could go ahead back underground and get ourselves some more diorite pretty easy like. What I think might be a good idea is if we were to go ahead and use maybe half the durability of this golden shovel here to get ourselves a small supply of grass blocks, right? 
And then, as I mentioned previously, we could go ahead and uh, try to grab ourselves some Podzol as well. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take that off our hotbar so we're not tempted to use it. And then, yeah, that'll be used for Podzol eventually, right? Oh, man, all right. I'm starting to regret this a little bit, actually, the diorite. I mean, yeah, we have limited resources. But later down the line, once we have ourselves an entire empire of villagers, I'll be able to purchase quartz from stonemasons, right? So, yeah... That's probably a good thing, right? Cool. Yeah, okay. Uh, for now, though, we will just sort of continue with the diorite, right? just so we've got a floor other than grass. Oh, there's ours out of diorite. Right? That's unfortunate, isn't it? Oh, look at that. There's a million slimes over there. Imagine us splitting those all up into the tiny variants. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Look at me! I'm surrounded by Dallas's cousins! <laughs> oh, why do I do this? Why am I so derpy? Oh, I love it though. <laughs> huh. The slime army has vanished. Don't know how that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diorite for days, my friendos. Diorite for days. Hello there. Our first visitor, huh? Right, we need to go to sleep. Oh, goodness me. I could already see a creeper in the distance. No. None of that nonsense, bud. Get out of here. Got you as well. Get out of it. Get out of it. Get out of it. Every single one of you. Got get. Get! Good grief, we're gonna be at 30 levels just by killing slimes in no time at this rate. Go on, you couldn't get much closer in terms of our resource supply. Three bits of diorite left. <laughs> very, very cool. So, uh, yeah, guys, this is what we're looking like so far. I do kind of want to go ahead and get the little uh, front porch area. I want to bring my horse over here uh, to end off the episode. And then, yeah, sort of, this is going to be a base that very much evolves over time, I would say. So uh, don't worry your faces about this not being finished in today's episode because that would be a frankly ludicrous goal at this early stage and probably the quickest recipe for burnout for me. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very much evolving base. So yeah, like I say, let's go ahead and see if we can't get ourselves the little front porch area done at the very least. And then yeah, we'll wrap up. Now the good news of course is while we don't have any sort of natural water ponds, we do of course have the water sources here with the little farm section. So yeah. Yeah, very, very handy dandy indeed. And I'm realizing as well that we could probably obsidianize all of this lava or do the little uh, water bucket portal trick thingy, right? We could probably make ourselves another portal inside of our base here somewhere, maybe in an eventual basement or something like that. And then, yeah, we'll have access to the nether as well. So here we go. That's all of the potatoes done. And we'll only have one strip of carrots because realistically, I really am only going to be using carrots for night viz potions and maybe eventually food. But then again, you could just buy golden carrots, can't you? So yeah, maybe eventually I'll just have this all be potatoes. But uh, yeah, there we have it. That's that side done and dusted. All we've got to do now is just sort of decorate this area, put some fence gates in front of it, and that should be it in terms of the little horse area. Would it become too crowded if I was to also try and squeeze in the little beehive in here? Hmm... I don't know. Uh, right, let's go ahead and put a little cauldron in the ground. So it's a little bit of a water bowl for the horse. Uh, maybe we could chuck in some hay bales rather like that. Uh, then the bee nest, I'm thinking, could maybe go in the corner here. So that could be plopped down there. And then we've got the bone meal out here. And then we simply do a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah, this looks like a pretty good area. The only thing is, I'm just now realizing <laughs> the horse will be able to jump over this. And we don't want that, do we? No, no, no. i tell you what I do want, though. I do want to breed these guys up. There we are. Go on, do your breedy breedy. Yeah. All right, and then hopefully we should be able to get, eventually, the total bee location advancement. Oh, look at the baby bee. Go on, what you doing? Why can't you just, like, fly in? Is he, like, waiting for his parent or something? What is this guy doing? Go into your hive. Go on. Go. Do it. Go into your hive, you dum-dum. Are you following your parent? Okay. Oh. Oh. What? Yeah, okay. I'm getting slightly confused. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. But, um, 
Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe that baby bee will figure it out. I've no idea. Let's go get our horse. Let's bring him into the base. And let's wrap up the episode here, my friends. It has been an eventful one for sure. And we've discovered some very, very weird things in terms of ore generation. But, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there, really. We've got some cool things going on. We're more geared up. We've got ourselves a rudimentary base area going on here as well. Horsey boy can go in there. And look at that. It looks like a proper little nice area, doesn't it? So then, ladies and gents, it is time to wrap up this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, and of course you're excited to see more, do be sure, of course, to drop a like. I'd very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content. Of course, if you guys have any thoughts regarding this base or any suggestions as to what we could be doing here, then leave them in the comments area down below. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.